Hi, I'm Ellen, and on today's video I would like to demonstrate a technique that I've seen and really admired, and uh, it's called cracked mud, and this is a, a wet felting technique. Now, I have seen this um, tutorial by Patricia Sparks, one of the great names in felting, and I want to thank her for doing that tutorial on uh, her blog called Sparks Fiber Arts. And you should check that out because she also was inspired by a Russian felter and she has the link to the Russian felter site on that blog as well. So you can find that there and uh, Pat said it was okay for me to do this video on this technique. So this is cracked mud and this is what I'm going to be showing you. So the first thing we do is we get our setup and what I have here is an 8 by 8 uh, square on plastic that I've drawn out and I have it on top of my bubble wrap and I'm going to be laying my wool on this outline which is as I said 8 by 8 and it's a copy of the grid that we're going to be using. And I'm going to show you how to make this grid. So this grid is done on underlayment, which is a flooring thing that you can get at Lowe's or Home Depot. And, and it, it's what I use for all my templates. And this is uh, the template we're using for the cracked mud technique. So to make this, I had my partner Ron help me because I'm terrible at math. So basically what you're doing is you're making an 8 by 8 square and your I um, used 2 inch squares but that's an arbitrary uh, dimension. So these are two inch squares with a half an inch between the squares and a half an inch border around the whole grid. So to do this simply, if you mark off with your ruler a half inch, put a little mark, then measure two inches, half inch, two inches, half inch, two inch, and half inch. Then you turn your paper and mark the same here, half inch, two inch, and so on. Basically, what you want to end up with is the two inch square, a half inch here, two inch square, half inch, two inch square. Okay? You'll figure it out. All right, so I am going to start by laying my wool. Now, I happen to be using Romney, uh, and it's the first time I've ever used Romney, so I have no idea how it's going to uh, work or felt, um, but I wanted to try the Romney. And I've weighed out uh, 16 grams, uh, because since I've done this before, the three or four uh, samples I made kind of weighed within the, that gram thing. But um, if you don't have a scale, just make sure that you try to get your layers even uh, throughout all of your assembly of layers. We're going to be making you know, three to four layers of wool on each, each uh, part of this template thing. So I kind of divided it in half to give me a rough idea. So, starting. I'm going to start by laying horizontally and I can see I don't like <laughs> this wool. It's different. All right, so I'm laying I'm laying my layers. This is this is very different than merino. It's fluffy and it uh whoa, this is different. Okay. I'm going to try to fill 
in all my spaces. And paying more attention to the edges. I'm filling in. Patting it down. Now, I'm not worrying if it goes over my outline. All right, so that was my horizontal layer. Now I'm going to be laying my vertical layer. And, and I have this on a darkish background so I can see the wool. But I always find using white wool to be extremely difficult. But I wanted to do an all white one. This technique has a lot of possibilities. Um, I've seen it uh, be used in making a scarf. You can use this technique on top of fabric. Now I'm going to start my third layer, which is now I'm back to horizontal. I'm going to have to use some more wool from my other stash. As I said, just filling in where I think there are some areas that could use some more wool. Kind of trying to contain it in my 8x8 eight eight outline. Alright, so now I'm going to wet this out. Uh, I, I just use ivory soap um, to start with. This is a, a bowl browser that I have in my hand to squirt the water. It's, I find it an indispensable tool. You can find them online. I'm going to cover it with my other piece of plastic. Again, pat it down. Check to see if it's wet enough. Remember when you pull your plastic off, it's always the edges that get stuck to the plastic. So use that finger technique to get it off. Still needs a little more water. Again, this Romney is acting differently than the Merino that I normally use. I'm checking for thin spots. You do that after a while, you learn how to use your fingers and find the thin spots. And I'm finding some, so I'm going to add more wool. And what I'm feeling is it's thin along the edges. But I don't want to fold these edges over. The, the wool that spread over the border because then I will end up with with lumpy edges. So it will shrink in when I felt it. Okay, so that feels much better. And now oh, I wanted to show you the grid. This is the grid before I've cut out the squares. So here's the cutout and then I would be going along each one of these squares and cut it out. And I end up with the grid template. So I'm going to place that grid template down on my first base layers of wool. And now I'm going to start to add on top of the grid. Uh, basically the same amount of wool that I laid on the bottom. 